This is one of my most anticipated episodes of Degrassi Next Class Season 4. It's camping time! Hello, I'm Carrie, and welcome to Degrassi Corner, and in this episode... We're talking about episode 407, Fire. This is one of those episodes where a bunch of characters are in the same space, so there's a lot of general stuff happening, and some of the stories overlap quite a bit. Now, the seniors, they're doing a grad camping getaway, but Esme essentially invites herself, opening the door for Frankie, Shay, and Lola to also go. Esme's paranoid because not only do all of Zig's friends dislike her, but she's also afraid Zig and Maya will get back together. And Frankie encourages Esme to actually try and be friends with the others, but they're not really interested in being friends with her. We also see a scene where she offers them homemade weed brownies, but everyone declines. So to make sure that Zig doesn't leave her, Esme wants her and Frankie to seduce Zig by going skinny dipping, but Frankie isn't so sure that's a good idea. The two get lost in the woods as it gets dark, but Esme's hell-bent on finding a place to swim, and Frankie tries to assure Esme that Zig isn't going to abandon her, but Esme freaks out on Frankie, and we learn that Esme's been using Frankie all this time in order to keep Zig around. Esme's furious that Frankie won't help her, so Esme just leaves Frankie in the woods. Esme returns to camp, and she overhears Zig telling Maya that he wouldn't know what he'd do if something had ever happened to her. So Esme fakes having an allergic reaction to a bee sting until everyone realizes that she's faking it. And the next day, Zig breaks up with Esme. If you didn't notice in the first 36 episodes of Degrassi Next Class, this 37th episode should have made it pretty clear that Esme is mentally ill. And on top of that, she has zero support system to give her any help whatsoever. Her behavior is so toxic and so off-putting that people who only know her at arm's length, like Jonah, Tiny, and Shay, for example, don't like her. And her behavior ramps up to such an extreme level that she ends up pushing those closest to her away. This is the second time she's pulled an extreme stunt to try and prevent someone from breaking up with her. And that, that's scary. The first time being, of course, when she faked self-harm to get attention from Miles in season one. But in Zig and Esme's final scene in this episode, look at her. Like, she is desperately clinging to Zig, begging him not to leave her. And with that Frankie revelation, sex is what she's been using in order to try and keep Zig around. Please understand that Esme has next level abandonment issues and It truly is a sad thing to see. It really is. And there's a pretty stark difference between her mental illness and what we've seen of mental illness in the past on Degrassi. It's not romanticized like Eli, oh, hey, I crashed my hearse into a wall for you. It's not like Cam or Maya, where both of them pretty much suffered in silence. So no one was really affected by their behavior all that much until after the fact. The reality is Esme is a representation of the ugly side of mental illness. Like Miles said in season one, quote, people can't deal with dark or scary or weird. They want you to smile and say, yeah, I'm fine. Everything's great. So they can go about their boring lives and never think about you again. Moving on to the next part of this episode, Maya's got to figure out a song to audition for Craig Manning, but she's still suffering from a creativity block. So Maya decides to eat some of those Esme weed brownies to relax, but then she's too high to focus. Zig and Maya then have an intense conversation where Maya feels like there's this constant pressure on her, and Zig reveals how upset he was over finding Maya on the roof. Esme's fake allergic reaction interrupts their conversation, but the next morning, Maya says she's going to stop pressuring herself to figure out this music thing and keep her mental health more in mind, thanks to Zig. So here we are, Degrassi, continuing this theme that they have with Maya In season four, her mental health at the forefront, and she's trying really hard not to allow the pressure of music to get to her because most of that pressure is self-inflicted. And I don't really have anything else to say about this storyline except for the fact that that Zaya tent scene really hurt. It was a really emotional scene for the most part. Zig has behaved like a jerk in recent seasons when it comes to Maya especially, but seeing him break down after what happened to Maya on the roof shows how much he does truly care about her. 
And what I liked hearing uh, in this episode is the fact that, you know, Esme was worried that Zig and Maya might get back together, and they might in the future, maybe, who knows. But I think it was Tiny who pointed out that Maya and Zig were friends first. So there's still all of this love and adoration between these two. Regardless of their romantic status, they still care about each other a lot. And finally, Shay's concerned that with this camping trip, she might feel pressured to have sex with Tiny since they're sleeping in the same tent. She says she doesn't know how to tell if she's ready to have sex, but during a moment when Tiny's taking care of her bug bite, she decides that she is indeed ready. And though that night their moment is interrupted by Esme, the two do end up having sex the next morning. This one's short and sweet. I love Shay and Tiny, and I love when couples on Degrassi can have actual conversations about their feelings and talk about uncomfortable things like sex. If it's something you want to do and you're ready for it, and you take the proper safety measures, then there's nothing wrong with that. And that's going to do it for this episode of Degrassi Corner. Leave your thoughts on this episode, the camping trip, hashtag fire, in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to Degrassi Corner for the latest Next Class news, reviews, and more. 